Gravity is one of the most important forces in the universe. Gravity brings us down to the Earth when we jump, it sets the Earth in motion around the Sun, and it moves the satellites that can bring you this video. But gravity can be difficult for students to learn about since we don't directly see it. So in this video, we're going to review how the force of gravity behaves and learn how to visualize this force using vPython. The force of gravity depends on a number of factors. First, there's a constant that's the same throughout the universe. Although in the real world this number is very, very small, in our code we're going to set it equal to 1 to make the math simpler. We can change it later when we want to calculate real world forces. Second, there's the mass of the object experiencing the force. We'll label this object with a 1. Next, there's the mass of the object exerting the force. We'll label this object with a 2. Next, we divide by the square of the distance between the two objects. Everything we have so far would give us the magnitude of this force. The next piece we need is a direction to turn this force into a vector. We can get the direction of the force of gravity using something called a unit vector. Your textbook might write a unit vector as a variable with a hat over it. You can think of a unit vector as telling you what percentage of a vector points in the horizontal direction and what percentage points in the vertical direction. vPython can automatically calculate a unit vector for us, so we won't bother with the mathy details here. In this case, we need the direction of the distance vector from object 1 to object 2, so we'll ask vPython to turn this distance into a unit vector. Here's a function we can use to visualize the force of gravity. Remember, object 1 is experiencing the force, and object 2 is exerting the force. First, we set the value for the universal gravitation constant. Next, we calculate the distance vector from object 1 to object 2. Next, we calculate the magnitude of the force from object 2 on object 1. Finally, we turn this magnitude into a vector by multiplying the magnitude by the distance unit vector. After calculating this force vector, we create an arrow to represent the force of gravity. Creating an arrow requires three pieces of information. First, we need this arrow's starting point, which is going to be at the center of object 1 since it's experiencing this force. Next, we need the direction the arrow will point and its length, which will be the force of gravity. We multiply the force of gravity times a scale factor so that the arrow stays within the screen. All of our arrows will have the same scale factor so that we can compare them later. And lastly, we need to specify the arrow's color. We use the color of object 2 so that we can tell which object is exerting the force. At the end of this function, we return the force vector so that we can use it later. Now that we have a set of instructions for creating these force vectors, let's make a star and a planet. We can create these objects by using vPython's sphere command. Each of these spheres will need four pieces of information. First, we need to give the position of each sphere as a vector. vPython works in three dimensions, so this vector needs an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate in that order. Next, we need to give each sphere a mass, since mass is used in calculating the force of gravity. Next, we need to provide a radius. This radius will specify the size of each sphere in the window, although it won't affect any of the physics calculations. Finally, we need to give each sphere a color. Let's make the star yellow. When we run the code, we'll see our yellow star appear at the coordinates we specified. Now let's repeat that process to create a blue planet. We need to give it a different position than the sun, because the force of gravity doesn't like it when two objects share the exact same position. Let's also give the planet a smaller mass and a smaller radius than the star, just like in real life. Running the code, we see both the star and the planet. Next, we need to calculate the force of gravity between the star and the planet. This is where our g-force function comes in. Notice that we need to use this function twice, once for the force on the planet from the star, and once for the force on the star from the planet. Now when we run the code, we see arrows representing the force of gravity that the star exerts on the blue planet and that the blue planet exerts on the star. Suppose we now add a red planet that has less mass than the blue planet and we place it about the same distance away from the star. We can now add calculations of the force of gravity from the sun to the red planet and from the red planet to the sun. 
From this new diagram, we can see that the star is experiencing two forces, one from the red planet and one from the blue planet, and the force from the heavier blue planet is stronger. This diagram also shows us that we are missing a pair of forces. We don't have any arrows pointing between the blue planet and the red planet. The activities at the link in the description below will walk you through the process of adding these forces and learn about how gravity works.